Hey everyone, my name is Ashton Gleckman. Hope you guys are all doing well. I recently released a piece of music called Journey of the Wind, and I had a couple requests in the comments to maybe do sort of like a walkthrough or a breakdown, just to talk a little bit about maybe like the sounds and what went into the piece overall. And Journey of the Wind is one of the first pieces I've written for a very long time away from any video or any other motives simply than to just write music. Um, so it's a really freeing experience because you're not looking at any briefs, you're not looking at any video, and you really just get to experiment with whatever's in your head. And I haven't played guitar for a very long time, so I sort of tried out recording some guitars. I've never really used electronic beats um, before, and I got to mess around with that. Um, drum kit I don't normally use. Um, and I got to mess around with the new Oliver Arnold's Composer Toolkit, so um, checking out all those really, really cool synth sounds and sort of felt piano was a really, really fun experience. So I got to sort of play around with some different ideas, and I think it was a really fun experience, so I thought we'd just sort of talk through that. So let's go ahead and begin. Thank you. 
So let's just talk a little bit about the track as a whole. Um, it's sort of split up into two different segments, and it's really carried by this sort of repetition format, which is where you'll just repeat a chord progression over and over again, and each time you'll introduce a new sort of sonic element, whether it's like a new string patch or a synthesizer patch or like a new rhythm, something like that. The whole concept is that it just continues to build and build and build until it reaches sort of a big crescendo. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about the chords that I'm using. So for the first segment, it sort of follows this progression. So we essentially have like a B flat plus two. We have a C with that four. And this is sort of one of my favorite. I call this like the Dario Marinelli chord because he uses it all the time. We essentially have like this F first inversion with that sus2. Then just a B flat chord. F sus2 um, second inversion with the G minor and the bass. Then we have C sus2. So it's a pretty simple progression and it just sort of repeats itself over and over again. And then we get into the second segment and it's sort of the first part of it is carried by this progression. This is just D minor seven, C first inversion, F, B flat, D, C first inversion, F. And then at the end of that, it sort of does this thing. which is really just this sort of harmonic walk down starting on B flat. And then for the rest of the piece, it really just repeats this B flat. And it just repeats that for the rest of the piece. And because the harmonic structure is so simple, um, we can use other elements to sort of keep the track hopefully interesting, whether it be Scandi strings or guitars um, or synths, whatever cool sounds you have to just sort of bring in and sort of introduce and let other things weave in and out of each other just to keep it like it's not always static on the surface and that there's new elements being introduced and, and everything like that. So let's start out with our keyboard section. Um, we have a few different pianos we're using. First one and the main one is the Oliver Arnold's Composer Toolkit piano. And if we go into the interface, the really, really cool feature that this one has is it has this feature of mixing sort of this really cool filtered noise with the piano so we can which just adds a really, really cool gritty quality to the piano. And then we have the Woodchester piano. which has this sort of more raw, um, sort of upfront sound, and it's way more bright. And the cool feature that this guy has is you can actually bring in all these different cool sonic layers to play with the piano. Now, since I was using other pads and stuff, I wasn't really in need of that feature, but it is a really, really cool feature when it comes to the Winchester piano, um, if you're ever interested in that. Um, and then the last one that we're using is the Triple Felt from Christian Henson. And this is a really, really cool one because it is so detailed and raw. I mean, you can literally hear like the fingernails on the keyboard. Which is, you know, because of its raw nature, you know, I don't like to put it too upfront, um, but I like to mix it in with the rest of the keyboard just to add that really, really gritty flair. So a lot of the times in the track we're using sort of like, you know, the triple felt um, for the sort of upper section, but playing like eighth notes and such. And then we use the Oliver Arnold's piano sort of for the melody and the chords that are below. So we're using the pianos for different reasons um, and also sort of in different ranges as well. 
Um, so there is just the keyboard section. So in terms of strings, I'm mainly using all for Arnold's Chamber Evolutions. It just has this amazingly awesome focus sound. And it was recorded in the same hall as the um, chamber strings. It just has this really, really great sound to it. Very grand, but also very detailed. So let's just sort of play a few of these sounds. Here is the sort of longest waves articulation from the um, Chamber Evolutions. And that's just like no reverb, that's like straight out of the box, which is another reason why I love it, is because it automatically has that tone right out of the box. You don't need to do anything to it. Um, now, I'm also using the Evolutions patch from the library, which looks like this. And essentially what it is, is it's all different pegs um, for different recorded samples. So you can actually mix and match the different textures, and if you wanted to introduce a little bit of, you know, thrilling um, elements or episodic elements, you can go in the red section, or um, if you wanted more sort of aggressive dissonant sound, you would go into the green section. So it really just has this great, um, this great tone to it, and you can meld it exactly how you like it because of all the different possibilities. So we're using that. We're also using a little bit of first chairs from Berlin Orchestra Inspire. Um, I do have the library, but I didn't necessarily need to split it off uh, because it's blending with so many other elements and it wasn't really on the surface, so we could get away with. But then in terms of our more sort of symphonic strings, which we don't actually use very much in this piece at all, um, but I use uh, the chamber. So for the synths, we have a few different elements. The first one is a sub bass from Albion 3 Iceni, and I use the Moog uh, one, and it's a very minimal element. It's almost like you can't really hear it, but you can feel it. Um, it's very, very subtle though, um, and I don't even know if you'll be able to hear it, but which is how you probably need like headphones or studio monitors to hear that. Um, but then we have this under bass wind sound from Omnisphere. And I think the patch is called something like disturbing, yeah, disturbing news. Um, and then we have this ambience patch from Oliver Arnold's composer toolkit, which I use all throughout. It's essentially this really cool filtered sound. It has a super, super cool tone to it. And then for this patch, it's essentially Spitfire Chamber Strings. I uh, uh, believe it's, no, it's actually Mural Flotando. And then I ran it through an effects sort of um, effects plugin called Zebrafy, which is from Yuhi. And essentially you can just run a sound through a synthesizer engine and sort of really create some interesting, odd sounds. So I ran the Flotando through this patch and I got this sound. And if you take it off, you would end up just getting the normal Latando sound. So that's what we did with that patch. And then down here we have this other patch, and I don't believe it's a Mellotron. Yeah, it's a it's a patch from Pangea, um, which is one of the unfinished libraries. And I guess I just forgot to rename it from Mellotron. Because um, I, I at one point had this Mellotron sound, but it was a bit too intrusive, so I took it out of the texture. Because it just wasn't really necessary. Um, and then, going into this section. So one thing for me is that because we bring in the piano here with the melody, we needed something to just sort of keep this pulse, to keep this rhythm. Um, so I introduced this little thing here, which I believe again is also from either Pangea or Colossus. Um, but you'll notice I use Omnisphere so much, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, it's from Pangea, and it's essentially just a guitar pulse. Um, we have this pad. And Bullet Trem is just another situation of not renaming the track properly. This is like some piano from Omnisphere, I think. Which is cool, because you can use Mod Wheel to change the tone. Um, so going into this next one, we have a Kalimba. Again, from Omnisphere, so... Unless you don't know already, I sort of love Omnisphere, and I use it 
<laughs> tons. Probably that's like my main synthesizer that I use. Because it has so many of these cool sounds. And you can also run your own audio through Omnisphere as well to get other um, sort of really, really weird warped versions of the source audio. I put in like weird nature sounds sometimes that I record outside and just run it through the, like, the granular engine and get all these cool soundscapes that I use a lot. Um, and then this pulse continues, ambience continues, sub bass continues. So going into this next section with the synths, we introduce this new element called the Klimba loop, which is this very Thomas Newman-ish element. And this is called isoforms from Omnisphere. And then we have this new sound from, um, I believe it's called finished, yeah, finish, finishing move. And the library is called post human. And the cool thing about it is you can create these really cool paths that the sort of sound runs through on the grid. Now I wanted to make the sound a little bit more static. So I just kept it. And so you can see each time we're sort of introducing something sort of new, um, whether it's just that, you know, one post human sound or here we introduce this new patch from Cloud Atlas. So then we sort of have like this electronic drum sound, which we have this bass drum from Omnisphere. And it's called Iaroma Kick, Iaroma Kick, probably didn't pronounce that right. Uh, but it's just sort of like a normal sort of EDM electronic bass sound. Uh, and then we have this snare, which I ran through a filter just to round out the sound a little bit, and then black hole reverb just to add something interesting to the tail. Then we bring in this low limba down here. And then this section is relatively simple because we just bring in a little bit of ambience. We bring in this one pad here. Which has this very wide sound to it. And then this patch, which is like my favorite in terms of like Thomas Newman ish. I mean, you could literally like. It's got that perfect sound to it. So this sort of continues, and then over here is when we begin to start our build. So you can hear the first chair sort of coming in. And you'll notice this with a sort of a lot of like Oliver Arnold's, you know, tunes is that he'll bring in this very, very minimal intimate string section, and then he'll just sort of build from that. So that's what we ended up doing, um, just because I like the sonic sound of it. So I bring in the first chairs, with a little bit of evolutions, just sort of creeping behind it. And then as it progresses, we bring in a bit more of the chamber evolutions. Bring in some of the consort strings. We also have these low hits that are hitting on all the main sort of moments. Then we of course have this specific thing that's just carrying throughout the whole thing until we get to the big break. Another thing we have here is like this distorted guitar, which I got from, I think it's Pangea and it's called Indiana, which is very, very fitting because I'm currently in Indiana right now. So, you know, just a little bit of a so what I do with the guitar is I record it once, I multiply by two, um, but it seemed hard very, very right fitting. one, hard left the other one, and then I will sort of by a tiny little millisecond um, delay the two, which creates a sort of wider sound. Here's what that sounds like. And then if I were to just center this one, you'll notice the difference. Um, and then going into this section, we have a few more things going on with the guitar as well. 
sort of like edge effects and stuff like that. Really, really inspired by U2. I love what he does with the guitar with all the delays and stuff. So I put on a few different delays and um, did the same sort of stereo effect, just multiply by two, multiply by two, um, stuff like that. So that's all that we have going on in the guitars. And then let's just take a look at this last sort of segment. <laughs> last sort of main element is the drum kit, which is from Studio Drummer. It's just the session kit. And I don't have any effects on this one, but it just sort of works together with what we have going on in the you know, snare and bass. And then with that, you know, that one percussion sort of line, we sort of have this rhythm that it creates. So this is my breakdown of Journey of the Wind. It's going to be on iTunes, Apple Music, and Spotify pretty soon. So I'll post the links down below when that is up and running. And if you guys want to get notified on new videos, do feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And there's going to be a lot more stuff coming soon. So stay tuned. I will see you guys later.